So let's hit OK. Use these settings. Run the next session. Go. And now what we see, let's review the event summary. There are now six events described. Each one using alpha amplitude. And to the right we see that the first event was using a greater than and the next five use less than. Here are the values we saw before reported in a column. Then to the right we see they all produce tones. They all have the same value A because they're all looking at the same variable. They all have the different value B's which are the corresponding thresholds. And we also now see different percent times because these thresholds are being met for different percentages of time. Now let's look in detail at the graph and see what's happening. The alpha amplitude is being plotted in white and we see it waxing and waning as we expect. In addition, every one of the thresholds which we've defined is being shown as a separate line and whenever the alpha amplitude goes above or below these thresholds we hear different notes, musical notes. So this is an example again of using a simple English language pull-down programming interface and we've produced a multiple thresholded protocol with a variety of different sounds. Very useful for down training or up training and it can be easily modified. Let's look at some additional examples of Event Wizard protocols that are built in. Returning to the built-in settings file, one for example we see is demo beta coherence range training with changing sounds. It's becoming increasingly important in coherence training to train within preset ranges in order to ensure we neither train too high or too low. Again, we'll read in the settings from that file. And let's look at the event wizard design. We now find that we've chosen under the event condition channel 1 beta coherence. And we're checking to see that it's less than a value of 8. If it's less than a value of 8, playing a MIDI sound, and the MIDI sound uses the shakuhachi flute with a note of A. This is our first condition. We now go to event number two and we see that it says if channel one beta coherence is greater than a value of eight. Now we play a MIDI sound and in this case the sound is beginning at note A with a flute the modulation is now amplitude and pitch modulated with a loudness change rate of two and a note change rate of two, or rather three and two, and a, mo a major mode. This is going to be the main training range to be training coherence above a level of eight. Now, if we look at event three, what we find is if channel one beta coherence is greater than a value of 13, the event now is set to inhibit event sounds. So if the coherence exceeds this value of 13, the sounds will be turned off. Let's see how this protocol operates. Again, run the next session. Now we see the standard coherence window simply being used as a display so we can see the value rising and falling. Beneath it, we see our three event conditions. Channel one coherence, less than eight, greater than eight, and greater than 13. Going to the right, we see the value of coherence and the threshold values and the percent times. Now, looking at the graph, we can see what's happening. When coherence exceeds 13, there's no sound at all. When the coherence is below 13, we hear the notes rising and falling. And when the coherence goes below 8, that's when we find the uh, note will hold steady at a bottom tone, indicating we're outside the training range. So again, a very simple example using three events 
we're able to create a complex protocol training a variable like coherence and training it within a specific range. Going back and looking for another example. Let's look at this one, demo alpha percent energy with Chinese koto sounds. We'll read in these settings, hit OK. The event wizard now says, event one is if channel one alpha percent energy is greater than 11, then play a MIDI sound. The reason percent energy is a nice training variable is that it automatically provides stop bands. If either the theta or the high beta become excessive, then this percent energy will drop and uh, it will give us the equivalent of training with guard bands. Looking over to the right, we see we've chosen instrument Koto and we've started on note A440. It's sustained with pitch modulation and the musical scale that's chosen is the Chinese musical scale. That's the only event that's necessary in order to perform this protocol. Use these settings, run the next session and go. Here we see the training variable. In this case, it's the percentage of energy in the alpha band. When the percentage is high, we hear the music playing. When it's below this threshold, we hear it uh, shutting off. And the music has a Chinese quality using a Chinese instrument, which gives it an aesthetic value. Returning again to viewer change settings, we'll show an example using a different sound feedback. Again, demo alpha percent energy. Here we have multiple thresholds with viola, atmosphere, and bell sounds. Reading in the settings, going to the event wizard, what we see again, we're using percent energy. If it's greater than 11, we use the atmosphere sound, amplitude and pitch modulated. Event number two uses the bell sound when the energy is greater than 15. Event three uses a viola sound when it's greater than 11, when it's uh, less than 11. And by combining these events, we'll hear what the uh, resulting sound feedback is like. 